10 days before Christmas in 1904, the Salt Lake County Board of Commissioners put ink and quill to paper for a historic act, the creation of two great school districts covering nearly 600 square miles of rural land. Utah's greatest public education movement to that time, including the Granite School District, was born. Children traveled to school by foot or on a horse if they had one. The school buses of the day were teamster wagons. As students and teachers gathered to the far-flung schoolhouses, some familiar problems appeared in early Granite District classrooms. Far too many absences of the students, due in part to the fact that farming households depended on their teenage children for labor. While younger children crowded the schoolrooms to learn reading, penmanship, and some arithmetic, secondary schools grew slowly due to lack of attendance. In addition to the demands of farm labor, scarlet fever, smallpox, whooping cough, and other diseases increased absenteeism. Only five high schools dotted the state at the time. Granite High was one of the first. Undaunted by challenges of too few books, attendance, and transportation, Granite High's second principal, Adam S. Benyon, saw the vision of public education. The high school that bears the name Granite is characterized by those enduring qualities, and in the training it gives its students is laying the foundation for some of the best character persons of our state. I'm Doug Wright, and I'm a broadcaster. I've been doing broadcasting ever since I was 16 years old, including the time that I was here at Granite High School. Well, for me, the, uh, the influence of a great high school just made all the difference, and having that key teacher, too. She was elderly, and she was a stickler, just a stickler. For punctuation, for spelling, for reading the classics, and uh, yeah, she, she was a real challenge, but she's one of those teachers that you might not have fully appreciated while you had her, but years later, you look back and you go, wow, you know, she made a difference. Having an institution that encourages uh, a learning process that uh, stimulates thought, really cultivates your, your personal interests and desires. I mentioned that great teacher that I had to this day. I love political science. I love the political process. Uh, I'm still not the greatest speller. Uh, I still am not perfect at grammar, but I'm certainly better than I would have been had it not been for Granny Graves. <laughs> Graduates like Doug Wright, let alone students of the past century, would find today's Granite District schools even more focused on the fundamentals of reading, writing, and math, at the same time rich with new opportunities. For many families with young students, life begins in Granite with preschool. I think they, they bring them to preschool because they think that this will help them prepare for the rest of their learning. In your language arts, there's multiple things that are included in that. Oral communication, we do a lot of that. I listen to them, they listen to me, um, so that's important. I feel like um, when they, they get a, a little bit of a jump start on, on education, you know, I think they go into kindergarten already knowing the setting of school, and I think it helps them to be able to focus on learning instead of getting used to what school's like because they already know. Also, uh, hearing the sounds and the, the names of the letters. I just took a class and they said that the most important thing that a child could take away from kindergarten would be to help them become a better reader would be that they know the letters of the alphabet. Not the sounds, but the letter names. And so that's one thing we do. I have my letter tree over there. We learn uh, what a capital letter A looks like what it sounds like. Then on Wednesdays, we introduce what the lowercase letter looks like. I have an older daughter that was in preschool, and I, I can really see the benefit. She's in first grade now, and I can really see the benefits of preschool that, for her. Well, I have found with interconnections that almost everything we do is hands-on, which lends itself to better student learning and retention because the kids, if they are using and practicing kinesthetically what they're doing in the classroom, not just reading and regurgitating information, they do better on tests. 
This school in particular does very well in tests and we're Title I. I have an, a new student in my class who's been with me about a month from another district and I'm not really sure what prior knowledge he's brought. He's been reticent to discuss things with us about the past school, but he didn't want to do anything for the first week. We had a hard time getting him to come to school and finally when he was engaged in interconnections in both science and social studies, he told me most recently last week, I'm so glad I came to this school. I'm learning so much more. It's fun. I go home every night and want to get on the internet. I'm getting books at the library. Thank you for teaching me this way. So to him, it's a whole new way of learning. All right, if you clean your desk off, except to need your pencil and your key problem solving. Notebook. When you're an educator, especially in a program like this, you are continually having to learn. Um, so that's why I became a teacher, because I love to learn and I love working with students. Our teacher, Mrs. Tanner, she likes to let us choose some things. Like if we do a report, it doesn't have to be a certain kind of report. We can choose how we want to present it and stuff. And we can, sh we get a lot of choices and stuff and I like that. A magnet program is a program for students who need the opportunity to work with other students who think on their level, who are, who are bright and who excel and need the opportunity, need the educational opportunity that's on their level. Ms. Tanner is really um, excited about what she's teaching us and so it makes you excited about what you're learning and she has great control over the class. So. And she has some really good ideas about what we should do and that. And she teaches us not just what we need to learn, but we learn a lot of our life skills, life skills too. We're going to talk about rocks today. And everybody has a pile of rocks in front of them. Currently, we have approximately 30 languages here at Westlake. It kind of fluctuates between 26 and 30. Right now, we're on the high end of the languages. Um, we have a huge ESL program here. We have actually 553 kids currently served by the ESL program here at Westlake Junior High. We have students um, from all over Mexico, South America. We have quite a few students from Africa, Asia, the Middle East. I feel very, uh, very scared because I didn't know any English, so I thought it was going to be very difficult. Fabian came about, I think, about four years ago. He started at um, in sixth grade at the elementary school. We had Fabian, he was still a level A student, which was a beginning student. Uh, first, I just like uh, started speaking English with my brothers, because they knew more than me. So I started practicing and practicing until I got, got it right. But he loves school. I mean, he always wanted to do well in school. He, he always gave it his absolute best. You know, school was important to him, school's important to his family. Uh, I want to get a career be a mechanic or architect. The thing that I like. The resource class, it's, uh, it's kind of like a class for kids. To, like, like in certain subjects, they have different teachers for different subjects. And like, those teachers are like, they help kids that don't understand it as well as, as a, a normal kid would. Working with special ed students it, uh, can be rewarding. They progress. They get very excited when they um, pass their classes because they've had they haven't had a lot of success. Um, it's nice to see them succeed. It's wonderful to see them graduate and get that diploma because um, they've had to work real, honestly twice as hard as some of the other kids. When when I was, when I first came to this school in tenth grade, like she was my teacher and like she was really nice to me. I have a traumatic brain injury and the uh, abbreviation is TBI. My injury was when I was seven or eight, and I hit the concrete head first. So like, you know, in high school, they, they gotta tell you you're immature. And they tell me that my, my TBI, like, it kinda makes me act a little childish, I guess. And then, so like, she she's helped kids like that, so she's used to it, so she doesn't get as mad. And so when she doesn't get mad, it, it kinda makes me feel better and more accepted. Aaron is doing a great job this year. He has grades were awesome for first quarter. He was eligible to wrestle. He played football. Um, and you know, you have to get the grades to be able to do that. So he's, he's doing very well this year. My name is Amela Shamenic. Um, I grew up in Bosnia, that's in, on the Balkan. 
there was a civil war going on, so we would have classes in the basement and um, just at different places all the time. They would change the location, and um, there was no electricity a lot of time, so we would go under candlelight, and it was just hard. And we would have small classes, so we would combine first and third graders in the same classroom. My dad wanted a better future for me. He wanted me to get a better chance to, for education and um, have a better future. The administration is really great here. They're inc they'll, they'll encourage you to join different things, different clubs. Um, they'll teach you new things every day. They'll help you with the college applications, with scholarships. With they're all just a part of like a part of family. Um, I'm hoping to get accepted to the University of Utah, and I want to major in business and pre-law, so I can work for businesses. there's a direct benefit to um, all of the children having parents involved in classrooms or in the schools. It, it, first of all, it helps teachers, obviously, to have other adults there. And um, I think kids benefit from a little bit of one-on-one -on -one interaction with adults who care about them and really value education and value what they're doing. I think I would tell a parent moving into Granite School District that there are a lot of benefits to the education that takes place in this area. Um, most of those benefits, I think, come from parents and teachers and administration working together for the benefit of students. And really, when all, all of those parts come together, the student's the one that really benefits from it and gets the most out of their education. At the dawn of its second century, a new dimension of education opens with the Granite Education Center, where students may access technical sciences, teachers are trained and improved, adult education is provided to the community, and even university programs are offered. This is the Granite School District where knowledge and skills needed for lifelong success in a changing world are provided for every student. From here, anything's possible.